Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Ask Flutter Q&A here at Flutter Interact. We've done a little switching around of hosts again. We got Kate up here with us. In the hot seat. Yeah. And we have John in the moderator seat. Yep, I'm over here. I'm back in a oh. moderator chair asking the questions that you post on Twitter. We also have an, uh, a new interviewee, somebody I'm very excited to have with <laughs> us. Uh, so this is Jen Creighton. Uh, she's the front end architect at The Wing. Uh, and you are a noted React expert. You speak in the React community and, and help people get up to speed with React, right? Yes, yes. Um, very, very into React. Um, when you asked me to be here, I was like, uh, you know. <laughs> um, and I was like, that's what we want. We want the React knowledge. This is great. I mean, but I'm a big fan also of seeing other communities. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of learning new technologies. So React is definitely what I work with all the time, but I'm always happy to learn something new. Yeah. And this is, you know, we, we talk all the time, you know, Flutter is a great way to build apps, but it's not the only way. It's one more tool in the toolbox. And so we wanted to make sure we showed that here at Ask Flutter. Um, so we have some questions, uh, since this is Ask yes, Flutter. So we got yeah. a few. Uh, and let me start off with one. I thought it'd be fun to sort of see how you would approach something and how we would approach something and where the overlap is. So uh, this is a question from Samir Ahmad. He asked, uh, what is the best way to manage global and local mm. state? Okay. So how do you That's handle that in, in React? So what we're thinking about when we're talking about you know, global versus local state in React is often this question of what do you store where? Mm -hmm. um, because we always have uh, some sort of global state. Um, and then you may or may not have local state. Um, now, the biggest question that I always get with this too is where to save things like is a modal open? Or is a drop down open? Or something like that. It's like pure UI questions, pure right? Pure UI, yeah. 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 And my question is always, you know, what else needs to know about that state? So if literally nothing else needs to know about it, it's local. And okay. it's always good to actually start local and then see if anything else needs it and then move it up to global so state. So it sort of graduates to a higher plane of existence of state. Yeah, it's, it's sort of <laughs> easier to go from that up than it is to go from that down, Right. you know. Um, and yeah, if it's used throughout, sometimes you do save UI state uh, okay. globally. So modals are actually a really good example of this where you might need to close a modal and then open up another one. Mm -hmm. And so you actually do need some state management at the very top level for that. Okay. Yeah. That, that sounds very familiar to the, to the concerns you'd have with Flutter, right? You, you certainly have stateful widgets, you know, mm -hmm. lower in the tree that might be tracking things like an animation. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. That's still a stateful widget, but you don't necessarily, you know, the time that you need to bring state up, you know, into a global state or something like that would be if you have two widgets that are sort of different parts of the tree, you need something above them that they could both look up to to get the state that they need. Yeah, That's, exactly. That sounds very similar. It's very comparative. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Right. So you, you have I a question, do, right? I do, I wrote this one down earlier. This is from Max Miracle uh, in New Zealand. Hey, a Kiwi. Uh, they wanted to know, how can I avoid messiness and flutter? Sometimes with piecing all the widgets together, it can get a little overwhelming sometimes. And so maybe some best practices yeah. in clean code. Yeah, this is something I've actually seen you speak on. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is pretty cool. It's a great question. So this is my, um, I would say, niche within React, <laughs> actually. Um, great is job, component, Max. component architecture. Um, really, I, I love component architecture. I really love that React is declarative, and that really helps me with this. Um, so some of my things that I see very often in React, I don't know if they apply to Flutter, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times I see things like a lot of if-else statements or ternary operators to say, no, actually render this thing instead, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, actually, what if we broke this out into two separate components and they actually can manage their own thing? You're going you're gonna to see maybe a little bit of duplication, but maybe we could clean that up some other way. Um, but mostly, it, it, it should be broken out. And so my advice to a lot of people starting out in React is more components, not less. More components, go towards that. So fewer you know. total properties in going into more different components. Yeah, because uh, we actually talked about this just really slightly before this, that I do a talk where I talk about the apocalypse, which is when you have like a million <laughs> props that you're sending into a React component. <laughs> and when you're doing that, like that is when you're probably sending in either business logic that doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. And usually you can just go ahead and pull that out into a separate function, give it to a parent somewhere and kind of pass it down that way or connect to Redux or something like that. Um, or, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Happens to be all the time. Or yeah. uh, it needs to be uh, broken out into separate components. Mm -hmm. So you're, do you're doing too much in one component. You're relying on one component to give you back how many different states. 
And so that's really the first thing that I usually tell people to do is break those up into more components. Don't try and put everything in one component. I mean, technically, in React, your entire app could be one component. It literally could be, mm -hmm. you know, where you're passing in all the props that would ever be mm -hmm. used, but why would you do that? Right. <laughs> yeah. And then the question is, well, why would you do that farther down the chain either? Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's usually my like baseline advice on okay. that. That's I, I, great. Yeah, it's certainly popular. Possible in Flutter to load up a widget with like 14 parameters in its constructor and all yeah, the main optional can, things. You yeah. know, it's it's possible to really roll your own widget so easily mm -hmm. that it can you know balloon out of proportion sometimes. So kind of keeping those best practices in mind is very helpful. <laughs> let me let me ask sort of a follow up. Is this is something that I we we get asked about a lot in Flutterland and um, and something that I wonder about. You know, how do you how do you separate uh, business logic from presentation logic with React components? Do you just say like, this is a component and I'm going to make it a purely business logic component and this one's just going to be for display and presentation? Sometimes. So um, earlier when React was newer on the scene, maybe about four or five years ago, uh, there was this idea of uh, presentational components, components that were really just meant to put in some props and they were going to present something, and then uh, components above that that would actually handle the business logic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not necessarily the, the case anymore. It was a good rule to get started with, and I still think it, it helps you as you get started with React. Mm -hmm. um, but normally, you're starting to rely on less components, but more like functions that handle the business logic and pass things down. Um, or you're relying on connecting to a state management library like Redux or MobX or something like that, and you're using that to store business logic in there. And so your lower components don't really have a ton of business logic to do generally. Yeah. Which is certainly the case with Flutter too, if you, you know, because you can use Redux with Flutter obviously, but even if you're using something like Block or, or some other state management solution, you're probably using an inherited widget somewhere, mm -hmm. and all your lower widgets are just like going straight up the tree to go find what they need from a business logic perspective. Yeah. And it, it makes it so you can reuse a lot of your components down the tree. <laughs> Um, if you're embedding it with business logic, what you're really doing is you're locking it into place. You're saying you can only use this with this logic. Mm -hmm. And to change it starts to get really, <laughs> really messy and you're going to be like, I'm just going to add a little prop here mm -hmm. and a little prop there. And then you have like 50 plus props and, then you have and the it's apocalypse. the apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, that's, that's about all the questions that we had for you. Thank you so much for being here with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I Thank hope, uh, you. yeah, um, if you don't mind setting your microphone right back down there, and you can go right back to enjoying the event. Jen Creighton, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>